Hello everyone. This is Quan Wang from Google. Today I'm going to share some updates about our work on speaker diarization rization at Google. We present this new system named Turn to Diarize, online speaker diarization rization constrained by transformer transducer speaker turn detection. Let's start with some introduction and background. Some previous works from our team were published at iCusp 2018 and iCusp 2019. If you are interested, you can watch these lectures online to learn more about our previous speaker diarization rization systems. This new work is largely based on previous systems. Let's also have a quick recap of the basic concepts. First, what is speaker diarization rization? By definition, Speaker diarization rization is the process of partitioning an input audio stream into homogeneous segments according to the speaker identity. It answers the question, who spoke when? A key component of all our speaker diarization rization systems is a speaker recognition neural network that produces a D-vector embedding from an audio segment. This network is often called a speaker encoder. In this work, we use an LSTM-based speaker encoder. But the speaker encoder could actually be any type of neural network, such as transformers or conformers. Our baseline system is what we call a density vector diarization rization system. In this system, we run the speaker encoder on sliding windows and aggregate them to segment-wise D-vectors. Then we use a spectral clustering algorithm on these segment-wise D-vectors. In recent years, there is a rising interest in supervised diarization rization, which no longer requires unsupervised clustering algorithms. These supervised approaches easily outperform clustering-based approaches on many benchmarks. Some of the representative works include Unbounded Interleaved State RNN by Google, Discriminative Neural Clustering by University of Cambridge, and Permutation Invariant Training, or End-to-End -end Diarization Diarization proposed by both Google and the Johns Hopkins University. Supervised diarization rization is definitely great. We all love it. But for supervised diarization rization approaches, if we want the model to work well, we need lots of high-quality training data. So what kind of data do we need to train a supervised diarization rization model? First, we need the conversational audio. And together with the audio, we need the time-allocated speaker labels. So here is an example. For each turn, we need the start time, the end time, and the speaker label. And this example has three turns in total, starting from speaker A, then speaker B, then back to speaker A again. However, if you ever tried to do this kind of allocation yourself, you will find that this is extremely time consuming and error prone. First, every time you hear a new voice, you need to go back to listen to previous parts of the audio to check whether this new voice previously appeared in the audio. Our studies show that allocating 10 minutes of audio typically takes more than two hours for a single pass. If we want to do multiple passes to guarantee the quality, it's even more expensive. So next, I'm going to talk about speaker turn detection. Since the allocation of time allocated speaker labels is so expensive, we have been thinking about how to make the allocation task easier. The first idea is that we change the problem of who spoke when to who spoke what. This is because in most applications of diarization rization, we don't really care about the when. What we really care about is the what, that is the text transcript from the ASR. In this example, who spoke when requires each speaker label to have a start time and end time. But for who spoke what, each speaker label is associated with the words. This is much easier to allocate. Another approach to make allocation easier is to use speaker turns instead of speaker labels. This is because to allocate speaker labels, the allocator needs to frequently go back to previous parts of the audio and listen multiple times to identify whether that is the same speaker as the new speaker. And most importantly, Humans are usually not very good at this. Allotators can make lots of mistakes. But to allocate speaker turns, the allotator never needs to go back. The allocation can be done purely based on a short-term context. This process adds minimal incremental efforts on top of a regular ASR allocation of the transcript. 
The image below is an example of allotating speaker labels versus allotating speaker turns. So that is the motivation of our work. Time allocated speaker labels are extremely expensive to acquire. But the speaker turn allocations as part of the ASR transcription are very easy to obtain, especially at a large scale. So the question becomes, if we have lots of data with speaker turn allocations, how can we make use of them for speaker diarization realization? In our turn to diarize solution, these data are first used to train an ASR-alike model for speaker turn detection. Then at the runtime, we compute turn-wise speaker embeddings and use speaker turns to constrain and supervise the clustering algorithm. So let's start with the speaker turn detection model. Speaker turn detection model is very similar to a conventional ASR model. The only difference is that we introduce a new special token, ST, that represents a speaker turn. Other than this special token, this speaker turn detection model is nothing different than an ASR model. For example, in this image, the left-hand side is the text transcript used to train a conventional ASR model. The right-hand side is the augmented transcript with the speaker turn token that we used to train the joint ASR and the speaker turn model. To train the speaker turn detection model, we use the recently proposed transformer transducer architecture. The model has three parts, the audio encoder, the neighbor encoder, and a joint network. The audio encoder has 15 transformer layers. The details of the transformer block are listed in table 1 here. The neighbor encoder is a bigram embedding lookup. The joint network has 3 dense layers. There is a final softmax projection to 75 possible graphemes in the output. We have introduced the speaker turn detection model. Next, I want to introduce how we build the turn to diarize system on top of the speaker turn detection model. Here is the high-level system architecture of our turn to diorite system. After we have extracted the knockmail filter bank energies features, we first feed them to the transformer transducer model to produce the transcript with the speaker turn token. These features are also fed into the speaker encoder, which produces a speaker embedding for each speaker turn. These embeddings are fed into the spectral clustering algorithm. At the same time, we construct a constraint matrix from the speaker turns and use E2CP to constrain the spectral clustering. After the clustering, we have our final speaker labels, which can be applied to each recognized word. As we can see, there are three core components in the turn to diarize system. First, the speaker turn detection model, which is a transformer transducer that is jointly trained with ASR. Also, I want to highlight that if a speaker turn is longer than 6 seconds, then we are going to insert a fake turn to avoid a single speaker turn being too long. This will compensate for some false rejects of the speaker turn detection model. Next, we have the speaker encoder, which is the D-vector model used in our previous systems as well. The speaker encoder will reset its states at the speaker turn boundaries, and we compute one speaker embedding for each turn. This is very different from our previous systems, where we compute a speaker embedding for each fixed length segment. Finally, we have the spectral clustering. We are clustering the turn-wise D vectors. Because there are much less turns than fixed length segments, this will make the clustering drastically cheaper. Also, the clustering is constrained by speaker turns, which we will discuss later. About the spectral clustering, the basic steps are pretty similar to our previous systems. I highlighted a few steps that are different here. So first, we construct an affinity matrix based on cosine similarities. Then, we apply a few refinement operations on the affinity matrix. We previously used a Gaussian blur for the dense divector system, but here we don't need it anymore, because for turn-wise divectors, we cannot assume continuity. So, the first refinement operation is the row-wise soft thresholding. We find the threshold with the auto-tune approach. After the thresholding, we symmetrize the matrix. And that's it, only two steps of refinement. After the refinement, we compute the Naplasian matrix and apply eigen decomposition. Then we can use eigen gap to estimate the number of speakers and apply k-means on the renormalized spectral embeddings. 
So these are the basic steps of the spectral clustering without constraints. You can find more details in the paper. But since we have the speaker turn detection, we want to make use of that information during the clustering as well. That's why we introduced the speaker turn priors. We know that from the transformer transducer model, we have two types of speaker turn tokens. We have the fixed speaker turns that are inserted to avoid very known turns. We also have the true speaker turns that are real outputs of the transformer transducer, each with a confidence. If we have two neighboring segments, they must be divided by a speaker turn. If that's a real speaker turn, we call it a canonical link or CL. If that's a fixed speaker turn, we call it a master link or ML. With these concepts, we define a constraint matrix Q, which has the same shape with the affinity matrix A. If two segments are CL and the confidence of the speaker turn is larger than a threshold sigma, then the corresponding value in Q is minus one. If two segments are ML, then the corresponding value in Q is one. If two segments are not neighbors, then the corresponding value in Q is zero. Because we only define the constraints for neighboring segments, the constraint matrix will be very sparse, which is not useful. So we want to propagate constraints to non-neighboring segments as well. For example, if we know that A and B are the same speaker, A and C are different speakers, then we can infer that B and C should also be different speakers. We use an algorithm known as E2CP to propagate the constraints. In this image below, we show an example of a constraint matrix before E2CP and after E2CP. Once we have the constraint matrix Q star, we use it to adjust our affinity matrix A to a new matrix A hat. This adjustment happens before we apply any refinement operations to the affinity matrix. So the workflow of the matrix operations are first, get the affinity matrix, then apply the constraint, then refinement, and finally, get the Laplacian matrix. Next, let's look at the experiments. Here are some details about the datasets. For the training of the speaker turn detection and the speaker encoder, we mostly use internal datasets from YouTube and the vendor collected speech queries. We also use some public datasets as part of the training. For the evaluation datasets, we have two internal datasets based on telephone speech. Outbound is a dataset that the call center calls the customer, which is always two speakers. Inbound is a dataset that the customer calls the call center, which can be more than two speakers due to the routing. We also use the eval subset of the Core Home American English public dataset. Because currently our speaker term detection model is only trained on English, so we did not use some other datasets that are multilingual. In our experiments, we compare two systems. The baseline is called a dense D vector, where we cluster D vectors from fixed dense segments that are 400 milliseconds long. For turn to diarize, we cluster D vectors from speaker turns, where a speaker turn has a max length of 6 seconds and an average length of about 4 seconds. We report the speaker confusion and the diarization error rate as the quality matrix. We also report the number of floating point operations needed to process one second of audio after processing 10 minutes and one hour of audio. For this metric, we assume that clustering runs every four seconds and auto-tune searches 10 steps. Our experimental results are listed in this table. Here, let's first look at the number of floating point operations needed to process one second of audio. We can see that for the dense D vector baseline system, this number becomes really big after we have processed one hour of audio. And it's even bigger if we use auto-tune to find the refinement threshold. This is because for density vector, the sequence of embeddings is very long, and the clustering a long sequence is extremely expensive, as we are doing eigen decomposition for a very big matrix. This means for long-form audio such as meetings, density vectors is not feasible. But for the turn to diarize system, the computational cost becomes much cheaper for long audio. This is because Speaker turns are sparse, so the sequence of embeddings is very short. Even if we use auto-tune, and even if we have processed one hour of audio, the computational cost is still very low. This means 
turn to diarize is a really good solution for long-form audio diarization diarization Next, let's look at the quality. For the turn to diarize experiments, we can see that auto-tune is critical for the performance, especially for the inbound and co-home eval sets, where there could be more than two speakers. We also see that if we apply the speaker turn constraints to the spectral clustering via E2CP, we could always expect further improvements. And finally, if we compare the best turn to diarize and the best density vector configuration, turn to diarize is significantly better on all the three datasets. Apart from the quality and efficiency, there is another benefit of the turn to diarize system. In speaker diarization there is one big challenge, that is, when to diarize. For example, if an utterance has only one single speaker, then we don't need a speaker diarization at all. Running speaker diarization on such utterances will yield bad results and is a waste of resources. For turn to diarize, it is very easy to implement a smart mode. That means we start with the transformer transducer only to recognize the speech and detect the speaker turns. We disable speaker encoder or clustering to save the resources. If the transformer transducer detected a true speaker turn label, it means there are at least two speakers. Then we can enable speaker encoder and clustering to produce diarization rendition results. Next, I will introduce the Python library for the clustering algorithm that we have open sourced. So we open sourced the spectral cluster package. Disclaimer here, this is not the original implementation as we use C++ at Google. This is only a re-implementation for research purposes. Also, this library only implements the clustering algorithm, not the entire diarization rendition system. It is being unit tested with 90% coverage and has detailed documentation. You can install it by simply running pip3 install spectral cluster. The features of this library include the refinement operations on affinity metrics, different types of Laplacian metrics, customize the distance for k-means, auto-tune of the threshold, and the constrained spectral clustering with E2CP. We also offer directly loading the configurations of the best system in our paper. You can simply import the configs module. So conclusions and future work. We propose the turn to diarize. Compared to supervised diarization approaches, the allocation of training data is much easier. We don't need time allocated speaker labels. We only need speaker turns as part of the transcripts. We use a transformer transducer for joint ASR and speaker turn detection. We extract one speaker embedding for each turn and we use constrained spectral clustering via E2CP. Experimental results show that turn to diarize drastically reduces computational cost of clustering. For turn to diarize, auto-tune and E2CP have significant improvement over the quality. Our system outperforms the best density vector system. In the future, we want to focus on multilinguality and multimodality. Currently, our transformer transducer model is only trained with English. We want to train it on massively multilingual datasets such that we can use it for more languages. The constrained spectral clustering idea can easily generalize to other modalities. For example, if we have additional visual signals that come together with the speech, we can use those signals to constrain the clustering algorithm as well. And let me know if you have any questions.